In today's episode of the Motorhome Matt podcast, should you pack your kids' bags and send them off camping? We talk to a campsite that welcomes groups of under 18s adult free in the news a new study from the rac shows eight in ten drivers are affected by headlight glare and we answer your questions on switching motorhome tires and what you can do if your pedals are hard to reach welcome to the motorhome matt podcast i'm keith gooden and i'm motorhome matt Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now remember to follow on your favourite podcast app and subscribe on YouTube, sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. In the news, we've just come back from the NEC Caravan Camping and Motorhome show and we're pulling together some of the exciting interviews that Matt did at the show for next week's episode. So stay tuned. It was a great week. It was really busy, I have to say. My feet hurt. My voice still hurts. There's me getting over my 100-day cough. It's back. (laughs) So forgive me. I might have to take a break. Leave of absence, get a glass of water. The RAC are calling on the government to commission an independent study into the issue of headlight glare. You know, Mm. you're going along the motorway in your direction and it's dark and somebody comes in the opposite direction and really one after another, bang, 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 bang. It really does tire your eyes out. I have the anti-glare coating on my glasses. I find that works uh, very well. New research has found, however, that 85% of those affected by headlight glare when driving believe the problem is actually getting worse yeah i think it is i think it is a survey of 2000 drivers found 89 percent think at least some headlights on cars on the road today are too bright and there's all sorts of headlights isn't there in cars there's the old-fashioned uh, bulbs and then we have leds and then we have xenon mm-hmm. and they're all different brightness and you yeah. do find some of the modern ones very glaring a lot of xenon ones have a blue hue around the edge and that's what catches you out and of course it, the the cars are getting bigger they're getting taller they're getting higher up more suvs on the road than ever so the headlights are higher so if you're in a low car you are going to get blinded really easily i've certainly found this to be true if i'm in one of my old small cars that isn't broken down (laughs) (laughs) and if it's working i'm low to the ground so i'm going to bmw z4 and it's a nightmare at night trying to drive along in that and the number of car headlights that are just higher and they're on dipped i'm sure they're on dipped just blinding me it's horrible hate it like i say the anti-glare uh, coating that you can get if you wear glasses is uh, worth every penny i, I remember years ago i used to uh, commute to and from worcester and my evening drive home in the dark it really would be very tiring with headlight glare i, I got the coating uh, the next time i got a prescription pair of glasses and it did work a treat works very well well make sure you get that next time so the, the other feature i'd h- hired a if i was given a loan car it was a mercedes ours was in for a a, a, a service and uh, I was given this pretty new Mercedes car really lovely car uh, and it had this kind of the car drove on main beam all the time and this box appeared around the oncoming vehicle to kind of black out my main beam so they were surrounded by my light but this box actually moved and followed them up the road and I'm sure I've seen that happening as I've driven toward a Mercedes and its box is turned on, but it takes a split second for it to cover me, and I'm sure that's why I'm getting this glare. So I'm sure the issue is one is, is many fold, really. One is the brightness of, of lights, the types of bulb that are going in the light, and also this technology. Yeah, the level is, of automation. Yeah, and this level of technology that just mm. isn't quite there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we went on holiday to Sicily a couple of years back, and we had... Uh, an SUV uh, it felt like it was made out of t- tin foil but it was packed with these extras and one of them was that full beam it's very cool glare and you, you can't turn it off no you just can't turn it off and the thing is coming on and going off when it thinks it should be doing it and you just don't feel 100% in control uh, but if you've got a different uh, view on this then please get in touch more yeah. details coming up later on of course, a great function that we are blessed with on a motorhome uh, is the ability to adjust the height of the headlights. So I'd say make sure that you are not one of those people causing that glare. Uh, so with a motorhome, if the back is loaded up with people and all your kit and caboodle, then you're going to point the front in the air. So make sure you adjust the height of the headlights and dip them down to their, to their lowest point. Um, that would be something definitely worth checking out before you head off. 
What's the thatleisureshop.com product of the week then, I love Matt. this stuff. So we've had a week of selling this stuff at the show, Bow Camp and Crespo. This is some of the Bow Camp product. I've got a box for here. This is the Orville Black Tableware set. It's melamine and it's just beautiful. We sold loads of this stuff. There's all sorts of different types and brands and uh, or the brand is Bow Camp, but designs, I mean. Uh, and it's, it's this is black. It's a ribbed bowl, and there's a whole plate set in the box. Uh, they do mugs as well. It's really lovely. Uh, and the prices of this have not gone up this year, which we were convinced they were going to. But we've not suffered massive price increases this year. But it's just really lovely. And if you want to really uh, raise the game on your tableware, then this stuff is definitely worth checking out that ledgershop.com just search the bow camp product range it's lovely so which one is this one because the orville is 65.99 and is it the patom or paytom is 31.99 yeah paytom is a different style it's gray this is the orville stuff which is black this is one of our best sellers and you get 10 percent off with the code motorhome mat as That's well right. do yeah. not forget that so it's not 65.99 it's 65.99 with six pound 59.56 taken off can you add that up in your head? No, oh, six no. Pound, six ten percent yeah. off. <laughs> yeah, it's ten percent. Yeah. Um, what's Google for? <laughs> Use the calculator on your thing. Yeah. It's the Motorhome Matt Podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. All brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. The main part of the podcast uh, this week is. Do you want to get rid of the kids? Yes, please. <laughs> this is interesting because this is about uh, allowing uh, young adults and kids to have time with their mates on a campsite, but on their own. How does it work then? Unsupervised, yeah. So uh, Ruben is my now 15-year-old son, and he wanted to go camping with his friends. And his idea was he would do it on our front lawn. And we thought, oh, blimey, that's going to be a nightmare. They're going to be in that the house, trudging mud in and out, using the loo, making a mess. We're going to be consumed with teenagers trying to eat us out of house and home so jude found a campsite locally your, your wife jude she's not married she won't marry me oh, no no she won't will she <laughs> no she won't smart lady yeah she's a smart <laughs> cookie uh, anyway so she ruse we call her stepmom evil stepmom she is yeah. so she found this campsite near cheddar which is not far from home uh, called Petruth paddocks and they accept groups of underage so under 18 teenagers with our adults and we thought this is interesting so she did some digging and read the reviews they were rave reviews and we thought well, this is a really good idea how does this work so we contacted the campsite really really easily and their whole mission is to encourage children to get out of the house and go away with their friends and go and experience the great outdoors so go and get some fresh air and go and get some life experience on their own without mum, dad or their guardian in close quarters. Or so some we look, over 60 year olds sitting on their fold up chairs moaning every time they walk past. Well, there could be yeah. that. Yeah. So we we sent Ruben on his way with his mate and we had to pay a behaviour bond. Uh, so if any one of them misbehaved in any way. And there are some very strict rules around drink, drugs, behaviour and so on. Then they are kicked off the site the following morning and you lose the bond simple as that so i'm responsible for the behavior bond as the group booker so if any one of either he or his mates played up i lose that bond so reuben was under strict instructions to behave i'll be honest i didn't really have any doubts that he wouldn't uh, and it was brilliant the onboarding experience i had was super and i was engaging with jules the campsite owner and he responded to my email said we'll try not to lose him all the best peter pan and it was a brilliant experience so room went off and had a great time so we went down to petruth paddocks because i thought this was a great idea uh, by a campsite to encourage children to get out of their bedroom and i asked them why are you doing it I'm delighted to be joined by Peter Pan. <laughs> this is Jules. Uh, how are you, mate? Really good, thank you. Good to have you guys here. It's lovely to be here in person with you. Now, tell us a little bit about bringing the kids here. Um, you know, why do you do it? Well, Petruth Paddocks is really all about opening up the outdoors to all walks of life. We've seen our children, who are now 30 and 32, that now run the campsite with us. We've seen them at age 9, 10, 11, 12, bring their friends here, have fun here, chill out, do take some risks, take some, have some adventure in their lives. Something that's missing from so many young people's lives today. 
uh, they're cosseted amongst cotton wool and we we want to take the cotton wool away introduce a little bit of risk mm. and adventure and just enjoy the outdoors a bit of independence a bit of responsibility for themselves that's yeah. what it's all about for us yeah well Ruben absolutely loved it and we're going to hear from him in a minute because I can ask him his his, his memories yeah. of this trip but you were saying earlier that's what this is all about really is about building memories for these children yes it is and it's um, creating an environment where those memories can just come alive where they can they can go out for the day if they want to and explore the menus or they can just chill around a campfire and, and chat and relax and, and just be given trusted to, to be able to do that and given some responsibility to, to look after the place to be conscious of other people nearby there'll be similar people in the way we, we work the fields is that people next to you will be doing a similar thing to you you won't have a family next to you if you're a young young group of, of young lads um, you'll have other young people doing a similar sort of thing to you maybe some older people doing a similar sort of thing but it won't be families it won't be older people who want peace and quiet we've got special fields for different folks with different strokes and this is a big campsite how many acres are you here it's 35 acres in all uh, divided into six different fields as I say, a quiet field, a group field for families, a group field for singles and for couples, uh, a spe separate area specifically for, for young people and, and adults to get together uh, and be trusted, I suppose, to, to just have a great time. Now tell me about the behaviour bond, because I love this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that trust is, is, is supported by a behaviour bond. The way that works is that uh, the organiser group pays us £150 and so long as nobody lets the group down, hmm. they walk away and they get that back as they walk out the door. If one person decides to let the group down, and letting the group down means making excessive noise to disturb other campers at any time of day or night, really, uh, or just being foolish and upsetting people, which does happen from time to time with 18,000 people here in a year, there will be about 1% that will let us down, and some of those may be young people. But it's very unusual if it's the under-18s that let us down. It's usually the 50, 60-year-old people in expensive motorhomes or camper vans that, that, that have too much to drink. And those are the ones I have the trouble with, uh, not so much the under-18s. So I was going to ask you, how often do you recall that or keep that behaviour bond? So we have about 300 groups a year pay it, and I yeah. think we keep back about 1%, three or four bonds wow. a year are kept back and uh, and it's very clear and they expect them to be kept back the following morning. Yeah. There's never a surprise the following morning when they're not getting it back. Now, Someone said to me about your campsite, so oh, it must be full of kids running, you know, running a riot and running a mock. Uh, I'm not going there, uh, but that's not the case at all, is it? No, we've learned over 21 years of doing this. That, um, you need to give young people, children, uh, so, so four, five, six, seven, eight-year-olds, the freedom to go and make new friends around the play area. But when it's dark, they need to be back with their parents. What we won't let them do, and we will round them up, is when they slap a head torch on and start running around that is not appropriate and the parents are told that's not appropriate and we help to encourage that uh, behavior to be reined in and so we're, we patrol till 12 o'clock at night every night in the summer uh, making sure that children are back with their parents and that other people are generally behaving and being considerate to people on site it's really important to mm. us really important so what age children are welcome here then without their parents under 18s are welcome from Probably 14 upwards, we'd mm. say. That's a reasonable age. And we've had some lovely, lovely young people come here um, who give the impression of wanting to help people and be a part of something that we've created here rather than destroying it. And that, for us, that's what it's all about. Give young people the opportunity. Usually, they don't disappoint. Yeah. And what feedback have you had? I mean, your reviews are fantastic, Jules, I have to say. But what's the biggest feedback you get from the kids and then also from their parents, who, of course, aren't here? It's a feeling of being in a safe environment mm. that we enable, not interfering with them, allowing them to get on and do what they want to do, but being there in the background should they need us. If there's Occasionally, the very young children on the play area will have issues where young older, older children are causing a problem for them. We'll be brought into that situation and we'll work with them to find a solution mm. that, that works for both. Because we want our play area to be open to five, six-year-olds to feel comfortable, as long as 11, 12-year-olds. Those need to mix. It can present problems. We're there to make sure those problems are resolved straight away. And what, But what feedback do you get from the parents so uh, oh, the those that aren't here at the weekend yeah. when the kids are here oh fantastic fantastic feedback they, they they come and pick their children up and and they are delighted with the way in which the young people have just gelled together and had a fabulous time making 
make, making friends with with people at a deeper level. Yeah. A lot of them, their friendships are, are on a virtual basis uh, or, or, or a, a low level sort of friendship. But when they come away having spent time around a campfire and with some music on in the background, chatting about stuff, that relationship, that friendship is so much deeper. And that's, yeah. that gives us such a buzz. It's brilliant. And occasionally I hear you put them to work with the hay bales. Tell me more. Yeah, well, this, uh, the story goes, but just after we bought the land, our, our son would have been 10, he's now 30, so 20 odd years ago. He had his 10, 10 year old uh, birthday here, a birthday party, and all his friends came from the local village, and about 20 of them, I guess. Parents dropped them all off on a summer's day. And it happened to coincide with having to get the, the hay in. Uh, and so the hay bales had been left in the field and they needed to be moved into the barn. And so the activity for the afternoon was doing just that, and they were absolutely exhausted. But, but loved it. <laughs> it's great. It's very tiring shifting yeah. a field full of hay it into is, a barn. I've had to really do it myself. So, Jules, where can people find out more about Patrice Paddocks and come and experience it for themselves? Yeah, I mean, we've got a great Facebook page. Uh, we've got a lovely website. People love our website. We we tried and tried and tried over the years, and we think we've pretty much done it to to make our website um, demonstrate what we're really all about. You shouldn't come here having seen our website with the wrong expectation. That means that we can always beat your level of expectation because we keep some things in reserve to make sure that you have a lovely time and it might be helping you put your tent up it could be making sure that your autistic child is looked after in a, in a sensitive way those things are added on top mm. but so uh, we try and make sure that what you see on the can is what we deliver and what is your website so it's www.petruthpaddocks uk. that comes from peter and ruth my late parents whose small inheritance oh. enabled us to first of all put a deposit on the land 22 years ago so i think they'd be proud of what we've achieved i I'm, hope they would i'm definitely sure they would be <laughs> it's a fantastic site it really is beautiful just down the road from us at home as well so yeah. ruben will be back this summer Absolutely. he's already said he wants to come again so Good stuff. we'll see you then. excellent thank you very much thanks again jules it was great to have a chat with you i thought i would then have a chat with ruben about his first-hand experience. Now, I've been joined in the studio by my 15-year-old son. This is Ruben. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, you wanted to come to the studio, didn't you? See Dad's workplace. Of course, of course. Feels weird being on this side of the camera. On this side of the camera. Brilliant. Now, I want to talk to you, Ru, about your trip to Petruth Paddocks with no parents. How was it? How did it feel? Yeah, it felt refreshing. There was a lot of freedom that we had. We felt uh, responsible and mature for the first time. For the first time, yes, that'll be fair. <laughs> Brilliant. And what did you get up to while you were there? Um, we did a few things. So we played frisbee with one of our, one of our plates. Cause we... <laughs> yeah, the broken one, <laughs> yes. Um, we went down to Cheddar, Cheddar Gorge, went in a few shops, went, um, had a few cakes. So you were allowed to leave the campsite then? Yes, within reason. Within so you, reason? Yes, so if it was like 10pm, you couldn't right. leave, obviously. But during the day... Go have a walk around Cheddar. Yeah. We went to Lidl, buy a few food, a few Some more food. food. Yeah. And you had a barbecue? Yes, we had a barbecue. I was cooking all the food for my friends. They said it was delicious. Good. I hope they weren't lying. No, I'm sure they weren't. I'm sure. And what were the people like that ran the campsite? Did you meet them? Um, yeah. So the other people that were staying in caravans, they're quite nice. And then the actual people that run the campsite, they're very friendly. They uh, gave us a tour of the campsite, showed us our field, showed us the bathrooms and the, the toilets and everything. Yeah. And I hear you had more than one shower over a weekend. Yeah, twice a day. Twice a day? What, teenage boys showering twice a day. What was going on? <laughs> it was a refreshing shower, actually. We thought the shower was going to be cold because most campsites have cold showers. Mm -hmm. But no. Just the ones I've taken you to. <laughs> so the showers were that good? Yeah, yeah. Twice a day. Cleanest boys in cheddar. And tell me about the behaviour bond. They gave you a bit of a pep talk, I understand, on behaviour. Yes. What was that all about? So that was about if teenagers, because teenagers being teenagers, bringing uh, un underage drinking, bringing alcohol, doing drugs, you'd get kicked off the campsite and it'd be about £150 that they'd take from you. Yeah, well, you... they take from me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or if we broke something, then they'd take some money out of it. Okay, and you're going again? Hopefully, yes, this, this year in August, in summer when it's warm. Yep, okay, Can't and wait. you want to go for longer this time, do you? Yes, hopefully we're going to go for about five nights. Oh, right, five okay. Days. Look out, look out, Jules, he's coming back. So, Rue, what would you say to someone, maybe your age, who's maybe thinking of doing this, and perhaps they're a little bit worried about it, what would you say to them? Definitely do it. It's a wonderful experience. Um, you get a lot of free space. You can sort of do what you want within reason. I loved it, my friends loved it, and yep. we're going again because it was so 
good and such an amazing experience. Well, thank you for letting me get my bond back and being well behaved. Can I have 50% please? Because I was just so well behaved. No, you can't. You've got revision to do. Go on. Go and get on with your homework. <laughs> Thanks, Rue. Good to see you. Cheers. So there you have it here on the Motorhome Matt podcast. That's Ruben, Matt's son, who stayed at Petruth Paddocks with his friends. Before that, we heard uh, from the owner at Petruth Paddocks, Jules Sayer. So all in all, a great idea, Matt. And yeah. it seems that Ruben had a fantastic time. He's set to go again. He can't wait. So I think he'll want to do it more and more. The best bit about it, as Jules said, is it's just a great way of getting children to be independent and get some life experience, both you know, dealing with stuff. I mean, Rude chose not to buy the logs because he's tight. Yeah, didn't want to spend the 20 <laughs> They've always got work. a plan for money. Yeah, man. absolutely. Yeah. They were, if they'd found a gym, they would have gone and spent their money there. But they were in Cheddar. Um, and <laughs> uh, there isn't a gym in Cheddar that they could find. Um, but it also by learning about each other. So building friendships that are, are based on that conversation around the campfire. Really good. Great life experience. And I would encourage, if you're a campsite owner listening to this, have a look at Jules's model. Talk to him about it. I'm sure he would love to help you consider doing this. I think it's a great idea. And as a parent uh, of, of a son, you know, love dearly, getting him that life experience is really important to me. Uh, so I'd encourage you to go for it. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Brought to you with ThatLeisureShop.com. It's time for our Q&A, our questions and answers. You ask the questions and Motorhome Matt Sims, he tries to answer them. And if he can't answer it himself, he always gets an expert to do it for him. This is a great old job you got there, isn't it? It's, <laughs> I've got a few friends I can ask. Yeah. It's like, you make it sound like he wants to be a millionaire. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> Steve Balls and Newton Abbott, he says, I'm looking at purchasing a person at 18. To one, which has sat for a while and we will want to be doing quite a lot of miles so I will replace the six tyres. Can you recommend a brand that are good value and which tread pattern is best for all year use? Keep up the good work, says Steve in Newton Abbott. Thank you Steve. Now Steve, you know there's a way you can check the age of the tyres. If it's been stood around it's probably a good idea to replace them uh, but look for that little pill which has the weakened year. Do you remember we talked about this before? Uh, and find out how old the tyres are. Um, but the key thing is look for a, on a motorhome tyre the CP mark on the side wall which means camper um, the tread pattern on a camper tyre is a different design so it's designed to withstand a higher pressure and also the side walls are thicker so it's designed to stand around and withstand a permanent weight so unlike a van which is one and a half tonne and then fully loaded and three and a half tonne and then back to one and a half tonne because all the deliveries were done. A motorhome sits at full weight most of the time. So the tyres are designed to cope with that. Um, the brands to look for, to answer your question, the Continental make a Vanco camper. The Michelin Agilis range do a camping or XC camping tyre and Pirelli uh, do a chrono camping tyre as well. So those are the three main manufacturers in the market. Hope that's been of help for you, Steve. Abdur Rahman Stevens is in Harrow and he says, Hi, Matt. My wife would also like to drive our motorhome, but she finds the pedals are a bit too hard to reach. Are you aware of any device that is available to help alleviate this issue, apart from wooden blocks tied to your shoes? Change your wife. <laughs> <laughs> any advice then, Matt? Yeah, so best practice is that a driver should be around 10 inches from the airbag for your safety so if the airbag was to go off you're not going to suffer a load of burns from it inflating really fast you can buy something called pedal extenders and as far as i can tell they are legal to use in the uk now there are rules about what you wear on your feet so driving in barefoot is not recommended driving in flip-flops is also not recommended you're meant to be safe and able to drive securely so your feet don't slip off the pedal haven't they, hasn't the flip-flop rule been introduced in the highway code this year it's actually illegal now to drive in flip-flops that's right yeah you have to be in appropriate footwear so but i did some googling on to, they're, they're called pedal extenders uh and that's what you need to search for i found some 80 quid for a clutch and brake um, and an accelerator pedal extender. There's a brilliant uh, skit on Top Gear where Warwick Davis goes on and they're getting to go around the, around the track. He's small of stature. A small of stature, a very famous, talented actor. Uh, and Richard Hammond decides it would be a good idea to make his own pedal extenders and so gaffer tapes a Pringles pot onto the clutch. 
<laughs> so Warwick gets in and it works. It's kind of stable enough, kind of. Unfortunately, he doesn't raise the seat so he can't see over the steering wheel. It's very funny. It's on YouTube. Made me laugh when I was Googling it. I came across it. So, I mean, Warwick's the ultimate challenge, I suppose, isn't he? Uh, but you can buy them. Um, the key is to, I would get them professionally fitted if you want to be sure that they're safe. But they just clamp around the pedal. They're a really innovative idea and you can adjust the angle of them as well. So you can get them safe and secure. Uh, and, of course, vehicles like this are adapted all the time. Um, so you could go to a vehicle adaptation, a mobility uh, company that would be able to do this for you. Um, or if you felt brave enough, you could do it yourself. I'll be honest, I would feel brave enough to do it for my other half if she can reach the pedals. Or for anybody who's vertically challenged, there you are, Abdul Rahman Stevens in Harrow. Hope that has been uh, of help to you. And you could always get yourself a taller wife. You could always get yourself to, but don't do the Pringles thing. <laughs> don't follow Richard's example. No. <laughs> okay, then, well, thanks for your questions. If you want to get in touch and ask Matt, what should people do? Dead easy. Go to mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. And I guarantee, I always say this, if you ask the question, I guarantee there are a 100 other people listening that go, oh, that's a great question. I thought that too. That's mhmp.info forward slash ask Matt. You can subscribe on YouTube. Just click the little bell and hit the subscribe button. And it's sponsored by arabasecreative.co.uk. Or you can share this episode with a friend, can't you, Matt? You can. We would love it if you did. If you think you know somebody who might find the content useful or maybe even entertaining, then give it a share. We would love you to spread the word of the podcast. Mm-hmm.